Hello YouTube, good to see you all again. It's been a little while since I made my last video, but I finally found some time this weekend, so I thought I'd make a video about focus stacking. Okay, so before I get into today's video, I'd just like to thank everyone who's watched my previous videos. If you have enjoyed the content I've made, please do subscribe to the channel so you can watch future content from me, and also you can check me out on Instagram. So what is focus stacking? So focus stacking is when you take a series of images at different focal distances and then you combine them together to form one image which has a greater depth of field than any of those individual images that were taken on their own. So the technique is quite often used in areas like macro photography where the lenses that are used for that quite often have a very shallow depth of field and as a result they can't get the item of interest sharp front to back from that individual image. So this is when they will take different images at different focal points along that item and then they can combine them to get that item sharp from front to back. It's also a technique quite often used in landscape photography and this is where I'll use this myself in order to get a good depth of field and make the image sharp from the very front of that image to the very back of that image. So here's an example of a landscape image where I've used focus stacking. To achieve this I took three different photographs one that focused on the very front of the image, one that focused in the mid area of the image and one that focused at the back of the image. And as you can see, if you look at the front of the image and you look at the back, the image is sharp all the way through. So from that example, you can see that I used three images to be able to get the right depth of field for that landscape shot to make it sharp from front to back. However, the number of images you need to take for any given subject does vary. And this can be affected by a number of different things. The focal length is something that affects this. So for instance, out in the landscape, when you've got a wide angle lens on, it's quite easy to have quite a big depth of field, where if you're doing some macro photography and you've got a macro lens on, like a 105 millimeter lens, you will notice that you'll have a very, very shallow depth of field. So aperture affects this. So if your aperture is wide open, say it's something like f2.8, you're going to get a shallower depth of field than when your aperture is closed, say it's something like f16. Your depth of your subject will affect this as well. So if, for instance, if you have a long subject, but it's side on to you, it'd be much easier to get that in focus from front to back than as if that um, same subject was orientated, say, away from you long ways. So to demonstrate this technique, I thought I'd do like a product photography type shot. So I thought I'd use this pen knife and if I have it sort of orientated long ways, I'll do one method where I manually change the focus throughout the knife and use those images to stack it. And another method where I use an inbuilt um, system in the camera where I tell it to where to focus first and then the camera will then take a series of shots itself to achieve the same effect. So here I am, I'm set up in the studio the camera I'm using is a Nikon Z6. I've got a Sigma 105 macro lens on that and I'll be using that through for both methods. I've placed a knife um, with the back to me and the point away just to give me a nice long sort of focal plane to sort of work through. So for the manual images what I do is I tend to use focus peaking on the camera to give me an idea of of the focus point because I do sometimes struggle with my eye even when zoomed in just to make sure I'm in focus. What you can see with um, focus peaking on is when I just move the the lens there's this like red shading and the red shading um, gives you an idea of where you are in focus. So what I'll do is I'll get the back of the knife in focus, take my first image and then move along just a bit more, move that red up the knife again, and I'll take the next image. And that will just help guide me to make sure I've got those images in focus. And I'll just keep going along the knife until I get to the very end of the knife. So to find focus peaking on your camera, what you need to do is go to the menu option. And from the menu, you go to your custom settings, you go down to shooting display and you keep scrolling down until you see the option for peaking highlights. 
So what you see here is there are two options, one for your peaking level. So you have three different settings for sensitivity. In general, looking through the literature for this, from Nikon itself, if you're using something that's more macro, you tend to set the low sensitivity setting, where if you're maybe working in landscape or with a, a deeper, bigger scene and on a wide angle, you would go to the high sensitivity option. So for using this on the knife, I've selected the, the low sensitivity option. The other option you can get is to choose what your peaking highlight colour is. Um, for me, I quite like red. I find red easy to see, but it would depend on your scene. If you're in a scene where there is a lot of reds, obviously you might not be able to see that. So you could pick blue or just to contrast that and make that an easier option. So for the automatic option in the camera, I use an option called focus shift shooting. To set this up, you need your camera in auto focus. And the first thing you do is you focus on the back of the knife. Wherever you set your um, focus point, that will be the focal point nearest to the camera. And then when the camera automatically goes through the focus shift option, it will then focus on points further away from the lens. So it will go deeper into the image. Okay, so to set up your focus shift shooting, what you need to do is you need to go into your menu and you will find this in the photo shooting menu and if you keep scrolling down eventually you will see the option for focus shift shooting there we go so we select that and that will take us into the menu so you have a number of options here the first option i work with is the focus step width so basically you have this um, chart here going from 1 to 10. If you're working in macro, you tend to go towards the left hand side of this. And if you're in a landscape, you would go towards the right hand side. So for this, I've set this onto 2. But although I've set this onto 2, this is something just to play with. It works. I find it works different with everything I'm photographing and I just need to play with the settings really to hit the one that I want. So once I've got that set, I then will look at the number of shots. So to set this, you just have this option to change the number of shots that you need to do it. And fiddling around with this earlier, I actually found that I needed 39 shots for the camera to do this well. I'll then look at the interval until next shot, so number of seconds in between shots. Now because I'm in a room on a soft carpet, I've set this to 5 seconds because I do get a bit of camera shake after every shot. So once you've got to your focus shift shooting options all set up, it's then just a case of hitting the start and letting the camera do the work. Okay, so I've taken all those images, both the manual and the images taken by the camera itself, and I've imported them over into Photoshop. So here are the images where I use the manual technique. So you can see the first image here where I'm focused on the back of the knife, and it took me 29 images with those little increments each time with the focus to get an image where I was finally focused on the tip of the knife. Okay, so if I look at the um, so if I look at the thirty nine images that I took using the focal shift shooting system within the camera, you can see at the first one I've got the bottom of the knife here in focus, and then when I move through to the one at the end, which I think is this one, I can see this is the one where the tip of the knife itself is in focus. Okay, so the next step. Okay, so the first step really is to take these over into Photoshop. So if I select the first image in a sequence, and then I go to the last one, holding shift and select that one as well, I will then select the option to edit these as layers in Photoshop. And it's important that you do open these as layers. So if you are like me and you have a computer that's slow, and my computer is slow, it's like watching an old man get out of a beanbag at times, it's quite frustrating. It's a good idea to make a lot of brews while you're doing this and have a lot of cup of teas and probably even a couple of whiskies.
Okay, so the layers have now opened up in Photoshop. These are the images I took using the manual method. So because I was touching the camera quite a lot, what I would do is align, make sure these layers are aligned. So to do that, I will select all the layers. So the top one's selected here. So if I scroll down to the bottom one and hold in shift and click, all the layers are then selected. I will then go up here to the edit tab at the top of Photoshop and down to auto align layers. So this brings up um, this screen here. So what I do is I'll just leave this on auto and I'll press OK. Again, my computer is quite slow, so this can take quite a time. So I tend to go off and do something and then just keep checking my computer to see when this is complete. OK, so all these layers are now aligned. What you do get here is an image that does look a little bit weird, but stay with it. It's, that's OK, that's normal. So the next step now is to blend these. So if you look at your layers panel, make sure all your layers are selected, which they still are here. You go back up to the edit tab and you come down to auto blend layers. With this selected, you use the stack images option and you make sure you've got a tick in the seamless tones and colors. And then again, it's just a matter of pressing OK and going off and doing something else for a little while. Okay, so Photoshop has now completed that auto blend. The knife's looking good, the knife's looking sharp from the back to the point. There are some odd bits on the edges here, but that's just where I hadn't focused, because I'd focused from the front of the knife to the tip, so these bits will look a bit strange. So by clicking, right clicking on where the layers are on the side, select flatten image, and that will then make this into one flat image and that just makes it a lot more manageable so I've not got 29 layers at the side here so my slow computer can cope a little bit better so for here really it's up to you to what you do next I usually start just with a crop just to get rid of those sort of strange bits that we don't really need in the image like so And then once you've cropped it, got rid of the bits that you don't need, it's up to you. You process this how you want and make this image your own. Okay, so I've processed the images. So I'll put up on the screen side by side. So on the left is the one where you use the manual focusing and on the right where you use the focus shift shooting option within the camera. And you can see these have both come out great. Um, they're sharp from the very front of the knife to the very back. I can't really see any major differences in these. The only thing is maybe I took 10 more images for the one where I used the focus shift shooting option in the camera, but I'm sure I could bring that image down just by changing them settings on the, on the options there. Okay, so if you have enjoyed today's video, please do hit that subscribe button so you can see videos from me in the future. Also, I am on Instagram, so please do check me out on there as well. Okay, so thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time.